of Christ to all. Today we have a very important topic and I hope people will uh, uh, listen carefully and feel free after we finish to download the video. Uh, usually it takes some time before the video is ready to be downloaded from YouTube, uh, maybe 20 minutes or 30 minutes, depending on how long the video is. But just to let you know, uh, feel free to download my videos and repost um, anywhere you wish. Uh, as long as you mention that this is a video where you get it from and the link and if you don't mind if you post the donation link too so people they can support us today our topic is different from my usual topic uh, we knew that uh, Uthman in certain time he burned the Quran and this is not a news right Uthman he burned the Quran and the Muslims agree about that and you can go right now and you can check in Google and you will find that the Muslims agree that Uthman, the Caliph of Muhammad, the one who inherited the, 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 the kingdom of Islam uh, after Muhammad he passed away, uh, he was the first one to burn the Quran. Now for sure the Muslims they have their own uh, uh, answers for this, uh, you know, uh, whatever the answer is, uh, I find it very funny. Uh, because if uh, if Uthman uh, burning the Quran, it's mean there's many Qurans and he have a, an idea that those Qurans should not be exist, and they must be wrong and they are different from his Quran. Otherwise, why you want to burn Quran is the same as your Quran. And here you notice that from the beginning of Islam, the Muslims they have a problem in disagreement about what is Quran from the beginning. Otherwise. There is no need to burn anything. Imagine someone is collecting the verses of Jesus, and then somebody wanna, uh, you know, uh, burn them. I mean, it doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't make sense because you are going to burn what is not right only, not what is is. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, sorry. Not what is wrong. I mean, uh, the, the, uh, if something is wrong, uh, uh, is not uh, like needed to be there. So we have to destroy it. So when Uthman he did practice burning the Quran, obviously he have a problem with this Quran. This Quran have issues. Uh, so what we see in the story of uh, of the Quran is very funny and it's uh, kind of confusing because the Muslim they say to us the Quran is preserved and Muhammad he have his Quran controlled or let us say protected by God now as you see here this is a website it's called learn the Quran and the question in the screen is why Uthman burned the Quran and then underneath there's a video of a Muslim uh, uh, you know of those who do business trying to explain why Uthman he burned the Quran however whatever you want to say it doesn't make sense but today we have different topic it's about burning the hadith not only they burned the Quran they burned the hadith too and that make it more funny You know there is a there is tons of hadith. I wish you guys you speak Arabic because those hadith is really fantastic, and uh, you know uh, the more you read them, the more you laugh, and the more you wonder what the, what is the problem with this religion. So I have a collection of hadith in front of me, and I will I will mention the reference one by one, 
However, here, Aisha, she said, I will translate for you, if you don't mind. If you speak Arabic, you do not need my translation. You can read on the screen. Haddathani, uh, uh, someone like an narrated by 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 from Aisha that she said, جمع أبي الحديث عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وكانت خمسمائة حديث فبات ليلته يتقلب كثيرا قالت فغمني فقلت it's it's a Rasul hadith she's saying that Aisha she said that my father who is Abu Bakr he collected five hundred hadith. And those are all the hadith about Muhammad. He have 500 collected by Abu Bakr. This is mean that Abu Bakr is writing the hadith. All right. And then she said, when he went to sleep, he did, he could not sleep. Like he is like something like some, something is bothering him. You know, he could not. So when he woke up in the morning, he said to her. فلما أصبح قال أي بني أبي بنية هلمني الأحاديث التي عندك فجئت بها فدعا بنار فحرقها. He said to me in the morning when he woke up he said my daughter bring me the hadith you have bring it to me so she brought the hadith to him which obviously in the papers or something like that. So he ordered to make a fire and he burned it. So Aisha, she said to him, "Why you why you burn it?" فقلت, لما أحرقتها? He said, "I am afraid that if I die, and those hadith is here, they might have hadith, uh, uh, or let us say, uh, let us say, uh, uh, like somebody report for me a hadith which is not accurate. So I decide to destroy it." He's afraid. That of those hadith, not other than they are true. If Abu Bakr in the time of Muhammad is worrying about fictions and lies of the hadith, how about someone collecting the hadith 300 or 400 years after Muhammad? You know what I mean? If this is happening in the time of Muhammad, like like just just Muhammad he died, those are his companion, you know, they are after him. If this is happening right after Muhammad he passed away, and Abu Bakr he is afraid that those hadith are not trustworthy, so he burn it. How the Muslim can trust the hadith which is collected long after Islam? In different hadith, uh, it says that Umar al Khattab, first we, we spoke about uh, Abu Bakr, now we are talking about Umar al Khattab. This is the book, Musannaf Abdul Razzaq, volume number 11, hadith number 20484, page number 258. Umar al Khattab, he said, I wanted to write the hadith which is the sunnah of the prophet which means the practice of muhammad so i ask i consult with the companion of the prophet and they said to me write it and he was thinking about it for a month as it says here for a month the whole month he's thinking thinking about it and then one day he woke up in the morning he said i wanted to really write the stories and the, the, the words of the Prophet but then I remember that about people who wrote books before and they focus in those books and they left the books of God and I swear by Allah I'm not going to write any so Abu Bakr here so Abu Bakr he burned the hadith Omar he refused to write the hadith Okay, so how the hadith is collected then? Those are the first hand, or let's say the first generation who live with Muhammad, they are rejecting to write the hadith. They don't want to collect the hadith. They, want even, they don't even want people to focus on the hadith.
This is Abu Huraira, a very well-known reporter of the Hadith. Abu Huraira, and the Hadith is Sahih Muslim, Hadith number 2098. Abu Huraira, he is called Abu Huraira. Huraira is like a spoiled name of a cat. So he is the father of cats because always he have cats around him. Remember, Muslim, they believe cats are clean, dogs are dirty. So Abu Huraira came to us and he struck his forehead. So it looked like Abu Huraira is upset and he's, he's, uh, he's mad. Why Abu Huraira is upset? What the problem? Obviously, there's a problem. But let us see what is exactly this problem is. You will see with me here, he says, Behold, I, I you talk amongst yourself that I attribute wrongly to Allah Messenger. So what's happening here? In the time of Abu Huraira, people, they are accusing Abu Huraira that he is making false hadith. Is making false hadith. If this is Abu Huraira, is the most important reporter of the hadith, was accused during his lifetime by the Muslims that he is fabricating hadith. And if I show you how many hadith is reported by this guy, Abu Huraira, you will not believe it. This one is a major source of the hadith. But as you see, the Muslims are accusing him that he is a liar and he is spreading lies. You remember we made a hadith before, we made a video before showing you that Hafs, the one who reported the Quran, he was accused by Muslims to be a liar, you remember? You can, you can go, go back uh, to the last week, the videos, and you can see the video I made about that. Uh, now guys, is my, is my voice clear from your side? Please let me know if you have a problem with the sound. All right? Uh, let me know, please. So, Hafiz, the one who collected the Quran was accused to be a liar. Abu Huraira, the one who collected the Hadith, is accused to be a liar. And they are calling them liars. Like not, it's not only you know, like it's not like you see. It says, uh, Look what it says here in Arabic. Like I don't like the Muslim translation in English. You know, uh, in order to guide you to the right path, I such case I would uh, I would myself go astray. But you see the translation here. It doesn't really really say the truth. The translation doesn't translate what the Arabic is saying. Here they try to make it like, you know, I attribute wrongly. What, what do you mean attribute wrongly? It's, it says it clear, I ana akdib. He is saying that he is lying. They are accusing him that he is lying about Allah's prophet statement. <laughs> then we need to ask ourselves. Uthman burned the Quran because the Quran is not matching. Abu Bakr burned the Hadith because the Hadith, he's afraid there's a lot of lies in it. Umar al-Khattab, he refused to write the Hadith because he's afraid that people, they might focus in the, in the Hadith, forget the Quran. Abu Huraira, one of the major reporters of the hadith accused by Muslims in his time, in his lifetime. And remember, this is a companion of the Prophet. This is the guy who Muhammad asked him, if you remember the hadith, do you know where the, where the sun goes? He said, uh, the Prophet, you, you, you know better and Allah know better. So Muhammad, he said to him, the sun every day, every day goes and sit and, you know, uh, and, uh, in a murky water. And for sure, this is a true hadith because this is matched with the Quran. But as you see here, he is accused of being a liar and he is accused to be a fabricator of the hadith. 
So how we can learn about the Hadith of Islam? If those are the major reporters of it, they are liars. In different Hadith, you will see, and this is Sahih al-Bukhari, and this is the reference in the front of your eyes. I hope the screen is clear for you. You will see that Muhammad, he said, Muhammad in the element of death, when? In the element of death. He said, Ibn Abbas said, Ibn Abbas is the cousin of Muhammad. When Allah Messenger was on his death bed, <coughs> and there were some men in the house, he said, he said, who? Muhammad, come near. I will write for you something after you, which you will not get, go astray. And this is to prove my point that Muhammad, he knew how to write and how to read. Because if you do not know how to write, how to read, he should say, come here and write for me. Something will lead you or etc. will guide you. But he did not say that. He said, come here, I will write for you something after which you will not go astray. Some of them who they are in the house during the death of Muhammad, <coughs> i.e. his companion specifically, the most close people to him, they said, Allah Messenger is seriously ill. And you have the Holy Quran. The fact the one who said that, it was Umar al Khattab. And I can show you that in different hadith. Actually, I made a video about it before. So the Muslims, they are saying that their prophet, he is seriously ill, which means he lost his mind. This guy is gone crazy. So don't listen to him. And here we will find something very fishy in this story. If Muhammad have the Quran, and the Muslim, they have the Quran, as you see, and they do not need any more as guidance. Does that mean Muhammad was going to give them more Quran, but they refuse to receive it? Why did it not give him a paper and say, okay, write for us, let us see what you want to say. This guy is the one who gave them the whole Quran and everything they have about their religion, it's coming from him. And now he is dying, and yet you don't want to listen to him? And notice here, Muhammad is saying, the purpose of him asking or making a request to write, that because he believed that if he did not do this writing, they will go astray. So the Quran is the book of who? To make it simple, if the Quran is the book of guidance of Islam, and if Muhammad saying, without this paper, I will write for you, or whatever he want to write, you Muslims will go astray. It means the Quran today is the is a lead of astray, astray. Because as you see, the one who's saying that, not me, the one who's saying that is Muhammad himself, is saying, let me write for you something after which you will not go astray. Muhammad already he knew the Quran is there and he is the one who brought the Quran anyway. So there is no way the Quran maker he do not know that the Quran is there. So why he is saying if I don't write to you I need to write this to you he is worried about them if I don't write this to you you will go astray. The Muslims accuse their prophet to go crazy and he lost his mind. And here you will see different stage of the Muslims. You see, when you are a king and you are powerful and everybody fear you, and then suddenly you are in the bed dying, and then everybody almost is spitting at you. This is exactly what's happening. They ignore Muhammad, and not only that, they insulted him. They are saying that he is seriously ill. Actually, the, the, the Arabic statement in Arabic, it says, Qad hajar al -rasul. Umar al-Khattab, he said, Qad hajar al -rasul, which means his, his brain is, is dead. He's is, you know, is, is, is like uh, 
speaking stupid things. But the question here for me is, what was Muhammad problem with the Quran? Why Muhammad he don't believe the Quran is an enough book so they will not go astray? And if Muhammad is a true prophet of God and God he protect him until the last second in his life and he will not let him say stupid words and I think most of Muslims they will believe in this they will say no way the prophet he is not losing his mind no way if this is a true then there is something missing in Islam Islam is not complete Muhammad he died before he finished his message and you will notice that this message is very serious is not just like I want to tell you something I forgot no he is saying it clearly that this message is the only way to protect you from going astray as you see here it doesn't matter if Muhammad is slow or fast this is not the question the question is why Muhammad he think the Quran is not enough and it's not perfect this man is in his in his in the in his uh, the death of uh, like in his uh, uh, the element of death, and yet he is strongly believe that the Muslims they don't have the guidance message yet. So the Quran, have, what is the purpose of it if this is will not go astray from getting lost? And then you will see here that after Muhammad he said that the story did not is not over yet. Uh, so the people of the in the house, they uh, uh, like uh, like they have different opinion about this issue, you know, as you see here. So each one of them he have like his own. Like, should we give him a paper? Should, should we see what we, you know, like, why you don't want to listen to him? So they are, they are having a fight over, should we listen to Muhammad or we should not? Some of them said, give him writing material. And this is the proof again that Muhammad, he knows how to write, how to read. Otherwise, they didn't say, okay, let us write for him. Look, give him writing material so that he may write for you something after which you will not go astray because that's what he said while others said the other way which means we should not so when their talk and differences increased they start shouting at each other Allah Apostle said get up Ibn Abbas used to say no dot it is very unfortunate a great disaster that Allah messenger was prevented from writing for them that writing because of their differences and noises do we have any Muslim have an answer for this Do we have any Muslim? He have any answer for this? Absolutely not. So based on this, you will see Ibn Abbas is the cousin of Muhammad, and he is called Hibrul Ummah in Islam, which means he is the highest scholar ever in Islam. He said that it was a disaster, a great disaster. That it did not allow the Prophet and the Prophet was prevented from writing for them that writing because of their differences and noises we continue <clears throat> because the disaster is not end here the disaster have more stories
We know the story about uh, the goat who ate the Quran. And you know that this uh, this story is uh, is correct, is accepted, is sahih. The verse of stoning and breastfeeding for adult. I hope I hope the text is clear for you guys. Uh, an adult ten time was revealed, and the paper was with me under my pillow. When the messenger of Allah died, we were preoccupied in his death. And a tam sheep came and ate it. All right. So what happened exactly here? Aisha reporting that there is an incident where obviously a goat uh, ate the Quran and those verses of stoning to death and this is true until now actually you can ask any Muslim do you know where we can find those verses he will say they are not in the Quran okay question why they are not in the Quran what happened and actually I'm very upset from this goat because I wish we can find this the ten the breastfeeding for an adult Ten time in the Quran that would be very funny and Playboy magazine they will like it for those who do not know what this is mean according to Muhammad any Muslim women she wanna associate with a strange man she have to give him her nipples and he have to suck it ten different time when in ten different occasion ten different days until he is satisfied and actually I support this practice a lot if Muslims want to do it because that will make Islam look really stupid and expose Islam more. But the important here that the stoning verses and the breastfeeding for adult, according to the story here, they are eaten by a goat and the goat destroyed. it. All right. We showed you in the hadith before Muhammad saying, bring me a paper so I will write for you. Something will not let you go astray. Question, who is the one who was writing those Quran and they were under the pillow of Muhammad maybe Muhammad same time if the Quran is preserved but obviously is not the goat ate the verses and the Muslim they say to us that Allah preserved the Quran in the in the chest of the believers they can recite the Quran okay here we go recite for me the breastfeeding for an adult recite for me why it's in the Quran the goat ate it I understand the goat ate it but Uthman he made the Quran after Muhammad death why Uthman did not find the verse of stoning to death and the breast free for adult in his Quran let us continue and again I am very upset from this goat for what she did because now she destroyed a very important proofs in the Quran. Uh, in this, let us see here. <clears throat> In this story here at Tafsir al Kabir, and we can find it, the, you know, this is written by a very important uh, a, a scholar. And the Muslim, they claim that he is a big scholar, but the fact I believe he was an atheist, even though he wrote a book of Tafsir. However, this whole story is not only written in his book, it exists in many books. But just to show you what happened here. In the story here, it says that when Muhammad, he had an, an scribe, he is writing the Quran for him. In this story here, Muhammad, he have a person who is writing the Quran for him. His name is Abdullah ibn Sarh. And when he was reciting Quran for him and Abdullah ibn Sarh, he was writing. Abdullah ibn Sarh, he suggests to Muhammad to write the Quran in different way, which means he changed the sentence. And he is the one who said, based on this story, Blessed be Allah, the best of the creators. 
يوسي هنا تسيس عن ابن عباس قال لما نزلت هذه الآية so ابن عباس he said when this verse came down alright what happened فتبارك الله أحسن الخالقين Basbi Allah, the best of the creators. And here we have a question about how many creators there is. I thought there's one. The Prophet said, Oh, sorry. Uh, let me go back from the beginning. Sorry, I, 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 missed a, I missed a line. Reported by Ibn Abbas from, 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 and Abdullah ibn, ibn Sa'ad ibn Abi Sarah, that a guy, his name is Abdullah ibn Sa'ad bin Abu as sarah Abi as sarah page number 76 he used to write the Quran for the Prophet when he finished or let us say when he arrived to the writing where it says khalqan akhara khalqan akhara in the verse Abdullah he was like surprised with this and then he said he said, فَتَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ أَحْسَنُ الْخَالِقِينَ This guy, he was listening to Muhammad. Muhammad, he arrived where it says, خَلْقًا آخَرًا another, another creation. So Abdullah ibn Sarah, he liked it. So he said, blessed be to Allah. And Muhammad, he said to him, write it there. What do you mean write it there? He said to him, write there what you just said. Allah just sent it to me too. Hakaza Nazarat. So Abdullah ibn Sarah, he was he have a suspicion about Muhammad because, and he said, if Muhammad is a truthful about him being a prophet inspired by God, well, you know what? I am then I am a prophet inspired to me by God because he used my sentence to make it Quran. And if Muhammad was a liar, then there is no good in his religion. Then this guy obviously he became an apostate and he ran away from Mecca. So Muhammad is copying a statement of his own inscribed guy, and this guy he noticed and he got him busted. This guy, I, I, I am the one who said the sentence, and Muhammad took it and he said, put it in the Quran. So there is no way he can be a prophet of God. So he ran away. And he was apostate, and actually he is maybe uh, one of the first apostate in the region of Islam. And remember, this guy was so close to Muhammad, so he knew him very well. He was he did inscribe. He sat with him many hours a day when he write. Then we continue. All the reference we are showing you will take us to one ending. In chapter 75, verse number 17, you can read any translation you want. Allah in the Quran said, supposedly Allah is talking, that it is on us to recite the Quran and to collect the Quran. You can change the translation if you don't like this guy, you know. I mean, all of them for me, they are liars. It doesn't matter. I don't use them because I accept them. Surely on us, the collecting of it and the reciting of it. Collecting what and reciting what exactly? Collecting the Quran and reciting the Quran, as you see. So the Quran is saying that the one who should Recite the Quran and collect the Quran is Allah. Not Muhammad, not Uthman, not Abu Bakr, not Ali, not Fatima, not any. And we just show, we showed you that the Quran was burnt, the Hadith was burnt, Abu Huraira was accused to be a liar, and Muhammad was accused to be a madman lost in his mind. When he said he want to, you know, he want to write additional things for them so they will not get lost. And the goat ate the Quran, 
And yet the Muslim, they are saying to us, the Quran and Islam is protected by God. And then they get somebody, he came 400 years after Muhammad to report the stories about Muhammad, but he never met Muhammad. And as you see, Abu Bakr, he burned the Quran because he's worried that the Quran, sorry, that the, the, the Hadith, it might full, be full of lies. And Abu, Abu Huraira, the biggest reporter of the Hadith, he was accused by the Muslims in his lifetime to be a liar. So what is left in this religion? We have a gentleman, he is a proud to be a Muslim. Do you like to call me in Skype, Mr. Proud Muslim? Do you like to call me in Skype so we can have a conversation? Who is the proud Muslim? He like to call me right now and explain to us what's going on. You know, the funny about Muslims, they are so proud, but about what I have no idea. They accuse their prophet to be crazy. His wife accused to be a whore. Their prophet, even he forbid them from writing hadith. I mean, he he. What what is what is uh, what is proud about? What do you Muslims have to be proud about? Can anyone tell me? Any Abdul? Are you proud about calling your prophet crazy? Anyone have a question? Please let me know. If you guys have any topic you want to ask me about, we have, you know, you, you will see the link underneath in Batron uh, uh, website. You can contact me there or you can go there too and you click at Facebook and you can send me a message. If you have a request to make a video about something or answer a question about uh, something, um, maybe we did not cover yet, uh, please let me know and I will be happy uh, to answer you. But as you see, you know, the Muslims, they are proud about really nothing and they have no idea what their religion is about. I never met a Muslim. He knew really what he's talking about. There are people who repeat, copy, paste. Even their question is copy, paste. Not, nothing there is real. You go and talk to any Muslim, you will find all of them, they have the same question, which is not even his own question, to the point he cannot even recite the question correctly. And we as a Christians, we have thousands of manuscripts and our manuscript written most of it right after the messiah few years after him and they don't accept it but they accept someone telling them about the messiah who came 600 years after muhammad and then 300 years after muhammad they collected some hadith about him and they don't even have original quran which means there is a distance of more than a thousand years before what is written about about jesus in islam and about muhammad thousand years about Jesus and 600, uh, 300 to 400 years about Muhammad and yet the Muslim they have no problem to accept it with all the things we just showed you even Hafs the one who reported the hadith and Asim they are accused to be liars and they are rejected for the hadith I advise you Muslims if you like to learn and read more you can go to amazon.com and you can type my name and you will find a list of my books and feel free to read them maybe maybe you will wake up and see the truth obviously this religion is nothing but a cocktail and collection of of, uh, of uh, he said she said but there's no proof of it and nothing nothing there is authentic as you see with your own eyes from the muslim books they themselves they don't agree with it they themselves they accuse their prophet to be crazy and i believe muhammad have a mental issue as you remember Muhammad, he imagined himself having sex, but in fact, he never did. The Hadith says the Prophet, he imagined himself, he has done things, but in fact, he never did. I mean, is it, this is a clear sign that Muhammad having or suffering from mental issues. And this is why I say to the Muslims, how authentic Islamic book says.
even guys even Sahih al Bukhari you see we are reading al Bukhari do you know that al Bukhari don't even speak Arabic I mean how in the world this guy he collect the hadith he did not meet Muhammad he never been with Muhammad he never saw Muhammad but yet he is the one who collect the hadith of Muhammad and he is not an Arab and according to many Islamic sources that he don't even speak Arabic Muslim Sahih Muslim and Sahih al-Bukhari is written by two foreign guys who don't they are not Arab they never been with Muhammad they never saw Muhammad they never heard Muhammad how Abu Bakr and we showed you the hadith Abu Bakr he have 500 hadith of Muhammad and how al-Bukhari he have tens of thousands The one who spent his day with Muhammad, he have only 500 hadith. And the one who never never been with Muhammad, he he have all those hadith. I believe this is the most weird, funny religion. And to believe in it, I think you have a serious issue. You know, uh, we can talk about tons of issues in this religion uh, but if you are a Muslim and you have a request from me please let me know I'm not against you as a Muslim by the way I feel that you are you are a victim and you have you know you are your guilt is just because you, you are born in a Muslim family It's not your guilt I mean it's not your fault but wake up my friend this is this is a very stupid cult you know, when you hear your prophet saying that if a man have orgasm first, the baby will be a boy, and if a woman have orgasm first, the baby will be a girl. I mean, shouldn't you ask yourself how stupid that is? And yet your prophet, he claimed that he's speaking for God, and nothing he say, even when he speak about medicine, it's coming from God. All your God in the Quran says, women, they have a sperm coming from the ribs, and the man have a sperm coming from the backbone. Isn't this is a clear? Prove to you that Muhammad and his religion is a fabrication. You know, when somebody says that Muhammad never exists, sometimes I ask myself this, the true question: Was Muhammad exist? I don't want to believe in that, really. But if you look around you, I mean, there is not, there is no authentic source of Islam. You know, when Robert Spencer he wrote a book about Muhammad does not exist, uh, I, you know, I was like, I said to myself, he is wasting his time. And I believe it is a waste of time. Why? Because we need to fight Islam as exists today. And the Muslim, they will not believe you, even if you prove that Muhammad never been exist. So I need to focus in Islam today. So I decide to focus on Islam today for like for the last 20 years. And I could not find something in this religion to be authentic, not the Quran, not the Hadith, uh, not the Sirah. You know, ask the Muslim about the Sirah. What is the Sirah? Sirah, Sirah is the a geography the, 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 the biography of Muhammad even this one is written long after Muhammad death and nobody knows where they get the stories from so I don't know how a Muslim can believe in this religion I hope Muslims they will wake up and they will see that there is something very wrong in this religion with this i want to say thank you guys for being with us i hope you did enjoy and please feel free to download my videos and share them and there's a link i made down under the video about allah is a being a physical being please download this that video it's very important or at least download it and share it in your if you don't want to share it in your google uh, in your youtube you can download it and put it in your google so you can share it with your friends this is extremely important video show you that the Muslims who reject Jesus for being a man they have a God who was an octopus he's a physical being he have legs he have shins he have hands he have five fingers the only thing the Muslim did not mention if you have teeth or not and imagine if Allah have face I have two eyes he have a nose but he don't have teeth that would be funny that will remind me by of my grandfather before he passed away with this, I want to say, God bless you. May the Lord open the eyes of the Muslims. And may the Lord guide us for the best. For He is the best. And I believe strongly 
that any religion who prevent its followers from using their brain and thinking it is a false religion this is why me myself I believe in the Messiah for he said read the books read the books which means search the books find the truth and the truth will set you free that is my Lord while the Lord of Islam, he said in chapter 5, verse 101 in the Quran, ask not questions. Ask not questions. Verse 102 says why? Because former generations, they asked the same questions and they lost their faith because of it. We as a Christians, we should ask questions. A person who asks and investigate when he is when he became a believer he will become a strong believer and you Muslims you don't dare to ask questions because you know that you have no answer and the answer if it exists is going to be shocking bad news for your God for he is nothing but a cult with this I say God bless you Christ is Lord and see you soon again. Please don't forget to subscribe so you'll be notified when we have a live you know, a broadcast and you will be informed. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. I mean to that. And see you soon again. Bye-bye.